Hi there, everyone. Sorry for the delay, just having a couple of technical issues. Um, so we really kick-started there with a very insightful and interesting debate. I, I have no doubt that many ag tech companies, both within AgriEpi's membership and beyond, have found much of that insight, guidance, and on-farm expertise very, very useful. So we, we are going to move on to hear from Helen Sweeney from Innovate UK for a short presentation on Horizon 2020's farm to fork opportunities. So Helen has had a 25-year career in agriculture. She's worked in both advisory and policy roles in DEFRA and its agencies. She's undertaken consultancy work in the private sector, covering a range of subject areas, including agronomy, environmental management, and farm assurance compliance. She started her current role with Innovate UK in June this year and is looking forward very much to meeting real people sometime very soon. So Helen, welcome, and it's over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Cathy, for the introduction and for the invitation to talk about Horizon 2020 and the opportunities in the Green Deal for the agri-tech sector. Horizon 2020, as many of you will know, is a European funding programme which is run from 2014 and ends at the end of this year. The final part of this programme is called the Deep Green Deal Call, and I thought it would be useful to set some background and context around what the Green Deal is and what the opportunities are. Can I have the next slide, please, Annabel? Thank you. Back in the summer of 2019, European parliamentary elections were held. Ursula von Leyen was elected as president of the Commission and took office in 2019. Within two weeks of taking office, she brought forward an oven-ready proposal called the European Green Deal. And it is a plan to address significant environmental, social, political and economic changes facing the EU. As you can see on this diagram here, it was not just a climate change and environmental mandate, but is also a European growth strategy for the EU. The Green Deal encompasses a diverse range of sectors and technologies, whilst having at its heart the recognition that a just and fair transition for all its citizens is essential. The Green Deal call is just the beginning of this direction of travel under the new president. Next slide, please. So this is just a, a a diagram that gives you an indication of the work areas under the Green Deal call and the scope of actions across all sectors of the economy. So you can see that in uh, area six is the one that I'm going to be speaking about today, farm to fork, uh, and area seven, ecosystems and biodiversity is something that I also deal with, but I won't be covering today. Next slide, please. So the Green Deal call came in at, at the end of the Horizon 2020 programme, as I just said. And it also comes with a handsome budget of one billion euros. But I suppose the elephant in the room is, well, we've left the EU, can we still apply for this funding? And the answer is a clear yes, we can participate. This was all agreed within the withdrawal agreement between the UK and the EU. The Commission is honouring their side of the agreement, so we are still eligible to apply and gain funding through this call. As with all 2020 programmes, Collaboration with EU partners is a fundamental part of the programme. So at least three EU partners are required in a consortium to take forward a proposal and bid into funding. The funding rates are very generous and vary between type of action and nature of the entity, whether you're a private business, a research organisation, a not-for-profit organisation. So the funding rates are either 70% or 100%. The Green Deal call opened at the end of September and will remain open until the end of the 26th of January 2021 for applications. After the closing date, proposals are assessed by independent EU assessors and then final decisions on successful projects are announced in the summer, with all contracts being signed off by the 31st of December 2021. Projects then run for their agreed time frame, whether that be two, three, four or five years, and deliver on their outputs and draw down the funding. Next slide, please. Now, we can't look at the Green, Green Deal farm to fork call without looking at the farm to fork strategy. It is completely essential and underpins the whole, the whole call. Now, there's a hyperlink there on the slide, so when you receive slides, you can click straight through to the strategy. The strategy was published in May of this year, and I would say that it has been received with differing amounts of joy or despair, according to who you are. 
I admire their ambition. It covers the whole supply chain from primary production all the way through to consumption. I think it represents a seismic shift in emphasis that aims to accelerate transition to a sustainable food system within the EU. Targets such as the 25% of EU agricultural land under organic farming by 2030 is just an indication of the direction of travel, bearing in mind that the current organic area is estimated in the EU to be between 7.5 and 8%. So to move from that level to 25% by 2030 is a big ask. So saying that the tr targets are stretching is to say the least really. It is also anticipated that this farm to fork strategy will be used to inform and influence reform of the common agricultural policy. Now, as you all fully be aware, having withdrawn from the EU, the UK is no longer subject to the CAP and we are now able to pursue our own objectives. However, proposals into the call need to focus on the ongoing EU context rather than the new UK policy landscape. Next slide, please. Thank you. So here we have it, the detail, the scope of the call. Uh, apologies for the, the number of words on there, but this is just edited highlights, so you can imagine what the call text actually looks like. This is very different in nature to the previous Horizon 2020 programmes, where they were far less wide-ranging and far more prescriptive in what they were looking for. This ambition of the call cannot be underestimated as it challenges the whole agri-food sector from primary production to consumption, as I've already said. It is probably the biggest change in direction with the agri-food sector within at least a generation. It comes alongside the need for a resilient and sustainable food system, able to feed and sustain the population and not to export the production elsewhere. Now, looking at proposals into this call, Proposals should address one of those six subtopics uh, labelled A to F there. As I said before, these are edited highlights and much more detail can be found uh, in the call text itself, which can be accessed through the hyperlink at the top of that slide. The first two ele elements of the call scope focus on climate change actions. This is divided between achieving climate neutral primary food production which includes the use of farm-based carbon sequestration. Attention is then turned down further down the food chain, post farm gate, to mitigating climate change by, in, sorry, by improved energy efficiency, climate neutral processing and distribution of food. Then we hop back to primary agriculture, looking at measures to reduce resilience on pesticides and fertilizers in all areas of cropping. We hop over into the livestock sector, looking at the reduction of antimicrobials in livestock and aquaculture. And then we move on to food losses and reducing waste, both before and after the farm gate. And that is also combined with looking at unsustainable packaging, which I take to mean plastic. Finally, right at the end, we've got the consumer end of that supply chain. The importance of sustainable, affordable and nutritionally well-balanced diets to improve the health outcomes for all members of society. So, as you can see, very far-reaching. So, the details of this call is that it's an innovation action. That means there is a funding rate attached to it of 70% for profit-making entities or 100% of non-profit-making legal entities. The readiness Technology readiness level is between five and seven, and most probably most importantly, the budget is 74 million euros. This is split between the six subtopics, so creating a balanced portfolio of projects across the piece. Projects are to the, be of the value between six and 12 million euros, and it is anticipated that one or more projects per subtopic will be funded. I think there's an anticipation that looking at this call it's it's sort of bringing together the technologies and the innovations that have gone before and actually putting them into practice next slide please so as i mentioned before the farm to fork strategy and the targets in there are very ambitious and these have been embedded within the expected impact required when putting forward a proposal and a program of action 
So as you can see, see here, these expected impacts, uh, which I can just whiz through here, the greenhouse gas emissions reducing by 50% by 2050, reducing chemical pesticide usage by 50% by 2030, reducing nutrient losses, again, another 50% by 2030, and again, antimicrobial reduction usage in aquaculture and livestock, another 50% by 2030, and reducing per capita waste at retail and consumer levels, again, 50% by 2030, and then reversing the rise in overweight and obesity rates within Europe. So this all has to be embedded in policy and decision making. The processes must engage citizens to ensure that these things are taken up and scaling up occurs. Again, check on the hyperlinked uh, section there to look at all the expected impacts that are required for each of those subtopics. Next slide, please. Thank you. If you are interested in rising to this challenge in the form to the farm to fork call, and I've not yet started the process, please have a look at the links on this slide for all the detail found in the funding and tender portal, how to participate in the online manual, which is part of the EC um, information hub. Moving on, there's a couple of recordings there that if you want to catch up on previous events and pitching slides for people who are interested in finding partners. There's also a, a link there to the Knowledge Transfer Network and the Enterprise Europe network which assists with people looking for partners and if there's anything i can do to help my contact details there so if you have any queries or interest please do get in touch if there are any uh, if there is any time left i'm happy to take questions or otherwise uh, respond via email thank you very much